Hi, I'm Gilly Hopkins, the Permanency Planning Program Manager at Vermont DCF and the co-director of Project Family, which is a public-private partnership that we have with Lund that helps us here in Vermont to identify and achieve permanency for young people who are involved with DCF. Hi, I'm Sarah Malik. I'm a Family Services Supervisor right here in the Hartford District Office. And we're here today to talk about National Adoption Month. November is National Adoption Month, which gives us an opportunity to elevate the impact that adoption has on Vermonters and the need for adoptive families for Vermont's kids. So Sarah, let's start by talking about adoption here in the Upper Valley. Um, how many young people have been touched by adoption this calendar year in the Upper Valley? Sure. Um, here in the Hartford office, we have already finalized five adoptions in the 2022 calendar year. Um, we have freed for adoption 13 children total, um, and we have six more adoptions that we're looking to finalize in the coming months. So of those about 11 children that will be um, adopted uh, or have been adopted or will be adopted, about 50% of those children will be adopted within their family of origin. So we have uh, two waiting children currently in the Hartford District Office. Here in Vermont, annually, there are between two and 300 young people who are adopted following DCF in involvement. So that gives some perspective. The Hartford District Office is one of our 12 district offices. So the two waiting children that you have are both featured in what we call the Heart Gallery here, um, which can be uh, seen at the website displayed on your screen. Um, our, you can go there to see some of the faces of children and some of the profiles that they, along with their support people, develop to help tell their, tell their history and a little bit about them. Um, photo listing is a child-centered uh, practice, and we always have the consent of a child, their attorney, their guardian ad litem, um, and then we keep that child's voice as central in deciding what it is that the young person is going to share about themselves and what they're looking for in a family. Can you tell us a little bit about what, what it is that we're looking for um, and what type of children that we're looking for permanent families for? Sure, so the child's narrative is always, first and foremost, the most important thing. Um, when a child or a family first becomes involved with DCF, keeping them with their uh, family is first and foremost uh, what we're looking to do. So we will work with the family um, around identifying kin placement. And then when, when we look to identify permanency placement for them, that's who we're looking to finalize adoption with if that's what the need is. So we wanna keep the child with their, with their family of origin. The child's voice is certainly taken into consideration. We wanna make sure the child is, stays within their community, has access to all the activities that they've always enjoyed, um, and that you know, their needs and wants are always at the center of, of this whole process. That's the most important thing. And when we can't find a family within a child's already existing system, um, you know, in my experience, and I know in yours, what we often do is we look to the child's personality um, and their individual needs to identify the specific, the specific family that would be a good fit for that child. Right. So we can also talk a little bit about what kind of families. So what kind of families are we looking for here in Vermont? Uh, we are looking for as many different families as we have children in need of families. Um, so we are looking for older Vermonters, younger Vermonters, single people, people who are in a, in a relationship, folks who rent, folks who own. Uh, we're looking for uh, families who live in rural communities as well as urban. Um, and our kids really drive what it is that we're looking for. So we have lots of young people who specifically are interested in farming. Um, so we often are looking for connections within farming communities. And I would say that these waiting children are probably some of Vermont's future farmers um, if they can just find their families. Right. Um, we also have uh, an awful lot of young people who specifically are interested in healthcare. Um, I think that's something that we hear over mm -hmm. and over again, young people who are interested in healthcare. So we're also looking for families who are connected to healthcare to provide, um, provide families and, and permanency for these young people. Um, what are some of the other patterns that you've seen in your many years with DCF of uh, interests of kids? Social workers and attorneys. 
Mm, you know, yes. it's, it's interesting. <laughs> I think they're so, um, become closely embedded with uh, those professions just by being involved with DCF. Mm -hmm. um, and teachers. Teachers as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. young people yeah. often feel a connection to yeah. their teachers, yeah. and so somebody who they've connected with through their school yeah. or somebody who just is familiar with educational systems, sometimes that can be a real comfort to right. young people who have right. experienced the adversity that right. so many of these kids have experienced. Yeah. I think it's so important the comment you made about um, you know there's a there's a family for every child a, a you know um, and that we you know we're certainly not excluding anyone who thinks they would be a good fit for a child or wants to consider being a foster family um, and I also just want to highlight that you're not doing this alone there is so much support out there if you are interested in becoming a foster family if you're interested in what the adoption process looks like there is a lot of support out there post adopt. Um, and we just want to highlight that, that you're not doing this in a vacuum and that there is certainly the support out there through the whole process. Um, and if there's anything yeah. additional you want to add Absolutely. around the support that's offered. Absolutely. So I think generally um, it's, it's fair to say that the older the child, the more complex their needs may be. Um, and the higher the likelihood that their needs may be complex. And so in order to support those young people, we offer access to um, a universally available free to families uh, post-permanency program. And that involves the assignment of uh, an adoption competent pro professional to offer psychoeducation to parents, to offer assistance with referral to services and access to support groups. Um, and then we also offer ongoing financial and medical benefits for families who adopt a child mm -hmm. who had been involved with DCF. Um, and those, those sort of, the details of those supports really vary based on the combination of every child's needs and the family's ability to meet their needs, but no family has to go it alone. We're always right. here in that capacity and there's a whole community of families formed through adoption that's also in this, in this world um, to assist folks who have been touched by adoption. I also wanted to mention as far as families go, the families that we're looking for uh, vary in terms of uh, sort of geography, socioeconomic status, as, I, as I've mentioned, uh, housing status. We're also specifically looking for families who have, who have themselves experienced adversity. Um, so specifically, we are looking for BIPOC families to partner with us. Um, and if an individual or, or family or organization doesn't feel as though adopting is a good fit, we also look for lots of other ways mm -hmm. uh, to connect young people to the communities that may be tied to their own identities. Um, we're also, of course, always looking for LGBTQ families um, and families of diverse faith backgrounds. Those are things that are really important um, to be able to continue to keep a thread connected for young people. Gilly, if anyone saw this segment and is interested in next steps, um, are there events in the community? Absolutely. So the Heart Gallery, which I mentioned earlier, that um, photo listing, um, we love organizations to partner with us to host uh, physical exhibitions of the Heart Gallery. And the uh, Quichi Artisan Fair, actually, this upcoming weekend here in November, November 25th and 26th at the Quichi Club, is they, the, those folks, the crafty ladies of the Upper Valley, have very graciously um, invited us to share that space with them. So if you're interested in seeing some of the uh, physical photos of these young people who have chosen to put themselves out there in that way, again, with their support people's uh, support, um, then that's a great place to come. And we're also looking for additional organizations always to partner with us to host, host that um, exhibition for young people. Now, are these just Hartford kids or are these kids across the state? Nope. Um, so the Heart Gallery, when, when the physical exhibition travels, we always ask the children individually if they're willing to participate in that particular event. Um, and typically, they're kids from all over the state. Thanks so much, Sarah, for this conversation today. And happy National Adoption Month. Thank you, Gilly. You too.